Welcome to the Conscious Builder channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons of radiant floor heating. We're also gonna get into how the system works, the different types of setups, and what you should do in order to make sure that it runs efficiently. I'm Casey Gray, the founder of The Conscious Builder, and on this channel, we help you build and live more consciously. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to check out the links in the description below. First, the two most common ways to heat a floor, so to create that radiant heat, is either through electric wires or water tubes. The home that we're showcasing here, we used the water tube installation. Electric wires are pretty straightforward. It just uses that electric resistance heat in order to heat the floor. And we'll use this in bathrooms or kitchens, for example, where we don't have radiant heat throughout the entire home. Water, on the other hand, has many different options because we can heat that water many different ways. If we wanted to use electricity to heat the water, we can go with an electric boiler, which is pretty straightforward. We can also use an air source heat pump, which is not too common in terms of doing the air to water, uh, but it is out there or you can go to a ground source heat pump, which would be a geothermal system, which is also not as common because of the upfront cost of doing that. Uh, if you wanna go with natural gas or propane, that also brings you to a boiler. And we've also done installations where we just run a heat exchanger off of a hot water tank, which could be heated through natural gas or propane or, or electricity for that matter. But in these installations, typically that is for a smaller unit where you don't need as much heat to do the entire home. The options you choose will really depend on what the goals are for your project and where you live. For example, where we live here in Ottawa, Canada, electricity is quite expensive and natural gas is cheap. So the electricity option does not get chosen very often. And even geothermal, although it is low uh, a low cost to operate it is a high cost to install and we don't quite have those those funding mechanisms in place yet where companies will actually fund the installation of the geothermal it's coming but it's not here yet if you do have that where you live that is an option as well if you wanted to stay off natural gas now here like i said natural gas is cheap so that is the option that the homeowners chose here is to go with a natural gas boiler for a setup like this we recommend that you use something that's called a combi system. And what that is, is a boiler and an instantaneous hot water tank in one. And why this is two separate systems is because you need to have what's called a closed loop system for your radiant heat. So that means that you don't want your water that's in your radiant tubes to mix with your potable water. So within this combi unit, combination unit, is you have that boiler that will just do the heating for your radiant heat throughout your entire home. And then you have a separate system or built-in tank in there, which is a small tank, which will actually have a separate pump and separate intake and outtake for the water where it's heating the hot water for your home. On the left of the picture, we have our IBC gas condensing combination system, which is the model DC-156. If you did not have a system like this, you would need a boiler and then a separate storage tank for the hot water, which would be heated from the boiler, but not mix with the water in your radiant floor system. The next thing you want to consider when doing your radiant floor system is the insulation under the slab. You want to make sure that that heat is being directed upwards and not just heating the floor underneath your house. For that reason, we had four inches of XPS around the foundation walls and two inches under the slab where the tubes were being installed. If you're installing onto other floors of your home that don't have a concrete floor, like a first or second floor, in this case, we did a slab on grade for this home, you're gonna to need to consider other options that are also going to increase the cost. So if it was a wood floor, you could use something like a joist track system where the tubes will work with the wood framing, uh, but, and you'll still need to insulate underneath because you wanna make sure that that is going up, that heat is being projected upwards. And also you could do what's called a lightweight gypsum overpour, where you put the tubes on top of the floor and then you pour over top of that. And it's not concrete, it's lightweight, like, like, it, like I said in the name of it. And that just allows you to have a nice finished floor and have that heated floor as well. Overall, I am a big fan of radiant floor. Having that heated floor is, is something that's really nice once you've experienced it. Uh, but like most things, it does come with its cons as well. First, let's get into the pros. Well, you have a warm floor. That is a big pro like I already mentioned. But what this allows you to do is it actually makes your home more comfortable. So you can set your temperature at a lower number, which means that you can actually save costs. You can save energy costs for heating your home. Another benefit of having radiant floor system is the fact that it is a quiet 
operation. You do not hear anything unless you maybe open the door and you hear that little water pump running, but you don't hear a furnace come on to heat your home. Another pro is the fact that it doesn't take up nearly as much space. You don't have all of that duct work that you need to get creative in hiding or lose headspace because if it's all tubes that can easily be ran anywhere they need to run. And finally, another big pro that I love is that you can divide this into zones. So you can actually set different rooms at different temperatures, keep that door closed if you like. If you like your room colder in the winter, well, close that room and set the temperature lower. Uh, and this is something that Although you've paid a lot more for the upfront cost of this, of doing a radium floor system, adding a zone is actually quite cost effective because it's just simply adding a separate loop, a closed loop that's on a separate pump with another thermostat. So there's not really that much more work or materials required. Now onto the cons. First con is that it's a high upfront cost to do a system like this. Number two is that AC, so the air conditioning, needs to be a separate system which adds more to the upfront cost. In the case for this home, we had three air source heat pumps installed, mini splits, so they're ductless, in each bedroom for cooling and additional heat in the winter if needed. You're unable to offset your energy bills with something like solar panels if you use natural gas or propane as the main heat source for your radiant heat. Glad you tuned in until the end. If this was helpful for you, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well. Any questions or comments, post them down below. And be sure to check out our three-day cottage series. Until next time, I'm Casey, and remember to live consciously.